Yo, what's up guys, Grim here, and welcome to my Bridge Currency Farming Guide and Loot Breakdown, where we're going to take a look at some of the stronger ways to run Breach, and also how much money you can expect to make. I ran 50 juiced out Breach maps, and I've got the loot to share with you guys. But Breach has gone through quite a few changes in the last patch. In 321, it had a major overhaul, which has seriously shaken things up. So it's going to be real interesting to see if it's actually even profitable anymore. Alright, first up, the Atlas Passive Tree. Overall, we've taken all the Breach nodes here, as some of them are pretty damn powerful. However, in 321, they did receive some pretty major nerfs, so a lot of them are a little bit weaker. But thanks to how the economy is operating around Breach, that might be just fine. So we've got all of those, absolutely every single one, including all the small nodes. We've also gone for a few supporting mechanics for Breach, which do work in most strategies. So first and foremost, we've got some extra chance to get some Delirium Mirrors, and of course, we're also going to continue testing some Beyond action here to see how powerful it truly would be with Breach, because it has so many monsters. To round things out, we've got some decent amount of map drop chance, and of course, we also have some Soul Fight here, which is going to give us a little bit of extra movement speed, as well as damage. As for maps and materials, I personally used the Dunes map, but I actually recommend you guys use the beach map instead and if I was going to run the strategy again that's what I would use the reason for that is because the breaches expand so quickly and there's so much room to cover it's actually handy if there's a few walls around you so that you don't have to move in literally 360 degrees of direction it gives you a little bit more time to get to all of the clasped hands and check all the directions for breach bosses so it definitely makes it superior as it also does have all the same good div cards as for rolling my maps, I used Chisels, Alks, and Vals. Now, Vals are particularly important here because increased item quantity affects how many Breach Splinters you'll get, as well as how many of the good Uniques and Divination cards you might have access to. So, it's definitely pretty handy. Although, I did die quite a few times doing this strategy, so definitely exercise caution with using Vile Orbs if your build isn't ready for it yet. For Scarabs, I used Rusted Sulfite Scarabs, Gilded Breach, Polished Cartographer, and Rusted Divination Scarabs. Although, there is quite a few different things that you can do with your Scarabs, and there is also a few questions that might need answering. There are two really big drops that come exclusively from Breach. There is the Chosen Divination card which drops from boss class hands, and there is special Breach Uniques which can drop from Breaches in maps. It's currently not known whether or not Scarabs affect the drop chance of these, but if they do, there is some interesting things you can do with Scarab choices. So first and foremost, you can upgrade your Rusted Divination Scarab to Polished or Gilded. And this might increase the chance of you getting the Chosen, but will enchant your chance of you getting the other Divination cards already on the map. You can replace your Polished Cartography Scarab here with a Reliquary Scarab. This may increase the chance of getting the Uniques which come from Breach, but it may also not. We do not know yet. But there is an incredibly expensive Unique called Skin of the Loyal, which does drop from Breaches, but it is very rare. And of course, you can also change your Rusted Sulfite instead if you don't want to swap out that Cartography Scarab for the Reliquary Scarab mentioned earlier. As for our map device, we're using Kirak Breach on every map to add two additional Breaches. For our influence, we ran Exarch, and it was a really great profit. But I actually think that Eater of Worlds might be more profitable if you run it and you click Global Alters each time to gain additional increased item quantity and rarity. The reason for this is that you'll get more splinters thanks to the quantity boost, as well as more chances at good divination cards, which might include the chosen divination card, which is worth a lot of money. You also get more rarity, which may give you more access to breach uniques from this as well, although that is still unconfirmed. Eater Worlds might be a profit increase. As for our compasses, we are using a compass which makes all of our breaches become Chayula, as well as adding three additional breach class hands. Now, this can get expensive. If you don't want to run Chayula, you can also run the Ulnatul version of this compass, and it's going to be just fine, and very similar profit. We're also running plus one breach, which will add additional breach to our maps. We're running Hunted Traders, which is optional, but will give you some extra juice. And we're running Beyond here, which will give us Beyond on each of our maps, which could be pretty good with all the monsters in breach. Before running this strategy, I do recommend having four Void Stones and at least nine favorites. If you're playing on beach, you're going to want to favorite one strand map and the rest of your favorites as beach. If you are playing on dunes, you want to do one mesa and the rest of them dunes, but I do recommend beach. 
bridge. For those new to bridge farming, let me show you guys how to run a map. Now, of course, we will be on dunes, but I do recommend beach, and you'll see why that is. So breach is actually one of the hardest mechanics I've personally had to run, as it does require a pretty fast character, and you'll see why that is. So when we get in, we check if we've got a delirium mirror. I personally activate this. We're going to be looking to try and get four rewards out of this, and if you're a little bit worried about difficulty, clear the rewards before you activate any breaches because breaches get pretty gnarly when you've got delirium active but we are going to go ahead and pop a breach here with the delirium mirror active because we are not scared we have the head hunter belt so what we're looking here for is mainly activating any chayula glass hands or if you're running ulnatul it'll say ulnatul we're also looking for any zeshtula hands and we're also trying to get any breach bosses we discover down and out here. So those are the main priorities. Priority one is breach class hands of the name of the boss. Priority number two, killing any breach bosses. Priority number three is going to be killing any res and going for any other class hands. But you never want to have a breach in which you don't activate the signature class hand of the owner. That is by far the biggest reason you want to be doing and looking for in breach. Now, the reason for that is because that has a chance to drop the Chosen Divination card, which you'll see when we do get to the loot is a big, big deal. Now, when you come across any Sulfite piles, which we added from our Rusted Scarabs here, make sure to click on them. They will give you a bit of extra power. And if you're lacking in power on your build, you can actually gather all of these before you even start opening breaches because they do give you a ton of increased damage and movement speed, which can help you click on all the class hands as well as search for breach bosses, which is big. So we're going for all the hands here. It can be a little bit troubling here. Okay, there we go. Got them all down. The, another reason we go for those big boss class hands is because they actually have a chance to spawn more bosses from them. And that's why we prioritize them so hard so early. Because we want the bosses to spawn before the breach is going to close. So that's why we look for them first. Now, in addition to that, uh, we are also... There it is. There's a boss right there. We're going to head down there and take him out. Uh, but you can see we are going to have to be pretty quick to get around and see everything there is to see in the breach. And that is why I mentioned that the mechanic is definitely a little bit on the harder side if you're not playing a super duper speedy build. I would say it's even harder than Legion. So definitely pretty tough there. We will be trying to get through here every single Exarch Altar we have. We're clicking the minion reward first and foremost. And if there's no minion reward, we're going to click the global reward there as that'll keep things safe and ensure that we don't die to any spooky Exarch global modifiers. So here we go. This will be our last breach, I'm pretty sure. Clear it out. Looking for that Chayula hand. There'll always be at least one. There it is. And if you don't get that, you're going to be pretty sad. There's the second one. Got that. Opening it up. And you will notice that we're not looting anything. And that's because we just simply don't have time. It's that fast and that hard to get everything done. So we're going to leave looting until later. Similar to some Legion strategies, which do this as well. And that's why we pick nice small maps like Dunes or Beach, which can easily be backtracked to get all the loot that we want there. So the boss is down, all the breaches are cleared, and now we can go on our merry way and loot all our splinters. Which can be quite the task, but when you do collect them all, there is some pretty nice loot to be had. So here's all the loot we got from that map. But don't forget, you can get a little bit more thanks to our mining byproducts note on the tree by coming to the mining encampment and buying some primitive chaotic resonators from Nico. Alright, now that we know how to run it, the question is how profitable is it? The question we all want answered. Well, in order to do that, I ran 50 stacked up breach maps. And we took all the loot from them and gathered them in some dump tabs. I then took only the cream of the crop. The stuff that you would absolutely sell and can be easily sold and separated that out and that's what we're going to be using to determine how profitable breach is so in these tabs we've got only the favorited maps stuff like breach stones which are easy to sell the extremely easy to sell contracts like deception scarabs but most importantly we have the signature drops from chayula so we've got the uniques here, which drop as well as the divination cards that exclusively drop from Breach. And we've also got the exclusive divination cards for Dunes in here, as well as all the currency, which you can expect and want to sell. Stuff that's not included is stuff like fractured items, random uniques, which drop, which can be worth divines. Super rare items like reliquary keys are out and stuff, which also POE Ninja can't pick up like forbidden tomes. So all that stuff is out. There's a ton of extra value in here, which you guys are going to be getting on top of what we're going to be talking about here. So 
In short, you guys can expect to make more than me. In order to understand exactly how much we made, I took all the loot from those dump tabs and put it in a self-updating spreadsheet here, which is intended to always have a pretty accurate price. If you're interested in getting a copy of this spreadsheet or updating it for your own pricing, definitely check down the link below for some instructions on that. But how much did we make? Well, first up, our expenses, which certainly weren't small. We've got our dunes maps, which set us back 250 chaos, all our compasses, our map rolling materials, our scarabs, and of course, the Kirak Breach Bench Modifier. In total, that set us back 2,255 chaos at the time of this video, or 9.8 divines. So we've definitely got some money to make back, that's for sure, but we more than covered it. So just in raw currency alone, we made 2,572 chaos of revenue. The raw currency section includes stuff like, you know, divine orbs, chaos orbs, uh, you know, ikis and ambers, stuff like this. But it also includes any raw currency divination cards, which you could turn in, like the fortunate. And if you want to take a quick look and closer look at any of the results of what we dropped, you can scroll across here to the rest of the spreadsheet and you can see exactly which items I dropped. For example, you can see here we got 255C, 74 Lesser Embers, 25 Greater Embers, etc, etc. And you can see all the way down here what we've got on the table. Back to the test here. Okay, so in terms of invitations, we got 405C of invitations. Most of that coming from the Syrian Exarch invitations. Beyond made us a surprising amount from what I was expecting, 592C in Beyond. We got 555C of maps, so we definitely sustained, we oversustained, more than double the maps back. We got 313C in random assorted scarabs, 72C from heist, 300C from our delirium mirrors, which we have a few points in, 236C from selling resonators from the azurite we got from the sulfite scarabs, and a whopping 5,000 chaos from breach. Mostly consisting of Chayula breach stones. So in total, if we take a look over here, we actually got a total of 67.83 Chayula Breachstones. That's more than a Chayula Breachstone per map. That is crazy. Now, we did also get a few of the other Breachstones here you can see, and that is from the Zeshtula hands and from spawning Zeshtula. Uh, those drop all the Breach Splinters, and they come in reasonably large stack sizes. So that's where we're getting those Splinters from. We did also get one chosen divination card here, uh, which is responsible for over a divine, which is why I was so excited about talking about divination card finding. So yeah, the chosen is a huge drop there, which can be quite nice as well. We'll talk about that more in a little bit here. But overall, we made a total of 43.4 divines in revenue, or almost 10,000 chaos. When we get to the profit and loss here, if we got our expenses of 2.2 and our revenue of 10k, we made roughly a profit of 7,700 chaos in 50 maps. That's around 33.6 divines. Or if you want it on a map by map basis, it's 154 chaos per map or 0.67 divines per map. So definitely not too bad there. Not quite as up to snuff as Legion, which makes a little bit more than that, but really not far off. With the profit covered, I do have a few additional findings for you guys though. And first up is the amount of divination cards you found. So we found 20 Fortunates, 64 Acclimatizations, and 210 Imperial Legacies in our Dunes maps. Remember, if you're farming Beach, you're probably going to get a few different Divination cards to me, but you'll still get the main one, the Fortunate. Now we did also get one The Chosen Divination card, making it incredibly rare, in line with the increased rarity of all Breach related items in 321. Now what's interesting about these Div card findings is that we were using a Rusted Divination Scarab. And if we compare these to our Legion results that we had from last video, which used a Polished Divination Scarab, they are eerily similar. The ratios are also eerily similar. So overall, this kind of leads me to believe that Breach may be a superior Divination card farming mechanic compared to Legion. Because remember, one was using Polished and one was using Rusted. I imagine if we had upgraded our Rusted Divination Card Scarab to a Polished one in this strategy, we would have seen even more Divination Cards than we had gotten in our Legion test. Definitely food for thought there for future experiments. Now in terms of our return on investment, we paid a 800C premium for all of our Breach related materials. But we made a 5,000 Chaos revenue 
from those breach related materials from just the breach stones and the chosen divination card alone that is a profit of 4100 chaos on exclusively those materials that is absolutely crazy. That's a 516% ROI, not considering any of the other drops which come from Breach, including those divination cards we just mentioned. That is crazy. That is 6.17 times our money back, which is really, really strong. I don't think I've actually seen any other mechanic I've farmed with an ROI that high. So this either means that Breach is overpriced, the materials are underpriced, or it's difficult enough that people just don't want to run it. And I think it's probably that third option there, because looting all the splinters is certainly a little painful. Okay, we also did get some unique here. We got two red dreams, one blue dream, and four severed in sleeps. We didn't unfortunately get any of the incredibly expensive skin of the loyal, but that is also a possibility that you could get in your own runs if you decide to run the strat. Now in terms of Beyond, we did get more money back than I was expecting from Beyond. In previous tests, I haven't had the most success with it, but we did make a profit of 180c, giving us an ROI of 43%. Our Soul Fight, actually we got pretty lucky on this one, we made an ROI of 214%, thanks to getting 94 Primitive Chaotic Resonators in 50 maps, which is around a Divine's worth, and the Soul Fight Scarabs remain to be cheap. For Kato here, we actually got a lot less maps back from Breach than for example farming Legion, meaning that Kato Scarabs weren't nearly as worth it as it was on farming that strategy. So it's definitely something that you could absolutely replace, and if you need any extra maps, which you probably won't, you can just buy them. But overall, it seems that Kato Scarabs weren't particularly worth it when farming Breach, so you could absolutely drop this Scarab, as we only made a ROI of 7.7%, or a profit of 10c, which would be my estimation here. So overall, including the time to sell, it's simply not worth running the Kato Scarab. With Breach, you're better off running an Aziri Sack Frag Fragment. To finish us off here, I wanted to give you guys a few potential improvements you guys can make to your Breach strategies to make even more than I did. Point number one is you can swap your Chayula Compass over for Ul Natul. All the tool compasses are generally going to be cheaper, and the stones are only a little bit cheaper when you sell them. In addition to that, he also has a better bomb drop in the form of the Anticipation instead of Skin of the Loyal. So you could potentially make even more from all the tool if you do decide to run him. He's also easier to run because he does Fizz damage instead of Chaos damage. The next improvement is altering the map you're running on. So this video has been all about dunes or beach because the layout's super duper nice and it drops the fortunate. But we've seen that Breach has really good Divination card drop rate, at least compared to Legion. So you can use this to your advantage and use an even better Divination card drop rate map like Cemetery or Tropical Island. Both of those can be seen on the wiki about exactly what they drop, but it's fair to say that Divination cards are superior to Dunes or Beach, and the layouts aren't bad either. The next point is you can swap your influence from red to blue. Now I'm not sure if this is going to give you higher profitability, but it's definitely something you could experiment with. So I primarily picked minion and boss rewards on red to get more raw currency. But you can go ahead and use blue altars instead, choosing global modifiers instead of minion and boss. Now, you want global modifiers which are going to give you a chance to get higher increased item quantity and rarity. You can get this a lot easier by using a boss rushing tactic which can be done on beach, cemetery, as well as dunes. This is going to increase your quantity and as a result, divination cards split to drop rate and hopefully good unique drop rate as well. That would be an overall improvement, potentially giving you more good divination cards and uniques and splinters. So you could swap over to blue. And finally, I will say there is also some potential to go magic find. So Magic Find really does take a few different forms in the latest iterations of Path of Exile. The first approach is to take a ton of increased item quantity on the Atlas Passive Tree here. You can take this full wheel here and the center one and get tons of quantity and a little bit of rarity. The other thing you can do is take increased effect of map modifiers on your maps, which will make your map mods more powerful and make it so you have higher increased item quantity and rarity on the map itself. Furthermore, you can just try and roll your maps better and only use the best maps you have in your collection after you vol them either on ID or 8 mod. That can be a good approach as well. And finally, you can just use some Magic Find gear, which gives you increased item quantity and rarity and potentially really enhance those div card drops. Overall, I think that you can use any of these and they probably will all potentially give you much higher results. 
In terms of leap mechanics, I personally really did enjoy Delirium and Beyond on this strategy, and they felt pretty good. The one thing I'd experiment with though is using Endless Tide. A lot of the times, because of the sheer amount of monsters in the breach maps, I ended up proccing the breach boss at the very start of the map, meaning Endless Tide might have potentially given me even more tainted currency and certainly more monsters in the map, so you could experiment with this as well. Overall, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and you've learned a thing or two about breach. Good luck with your drops, until next time, cheers.